Today we're going to be talking about the best drills that high school quarterbacks can do. So how this video is going to go down is I will show an example of a drill. So I'm going to talk about the technique behind it, what it works on. We'll give you the exact sets and reps to follow, and then we'll show a full speed example of the drill itself. So this first drill is for quarterbacks who have a wild front side. So one of the old school quarterback coaching methods that a lot of high school quarterbacks have this bad habit of is taking their front elbow and pulling their elbow down to their hip as a source of power. Guys, when we throw your front side is like the key to unlocking a ton of accuracy in your throws. What I mean by that is that when you guys go to throw, you want to pretend like you got an imaginary line down the middle of your body. It's called a midline. Now this midline kind of acts as almost like a teeter-totter, if you will. Something that you've seen probably like a playground before. When this goes down, your release point goes up. So if you're a quarterback and you have this overly high release point, you tend to miss high, you tend to miss low. That is usually from this wild front elbow. So we're going to be giving you a drill to work on that. When you guys go to throw, you want to keep this hand up by your face like you're eating a sandwich. If you could stay at this specific level, not have that elbow pull down, your release can stay inside your frame. I don't care if you have a lower arm slot, a wider arm slot, a higher arm slot, but this has got to stay here so this can stay inside your frame. Because when your hand stays inside your frame, we could extend and snap. And that extend, that release point, you guys want to extend almost six inches in front of your front stride. That is what helps us with accuracy and control on the ball. But it's directly related to my front side. So this drill works on that, right? So what you're going to do is you need a towel and you need a football. Very, very simple. You could use just a simple dish towel. How you're going to hold this towel is not like this with your hand around it. You're going to have your middle finger over the top of the towel, almost like so. These three fingers underneath the towel, right? So why do we work with the towel? A lot of quarterback coaches do stuff with the towel. I don't necessarily think they know why you use the towel, but you use the towel to work on extension. So a lot of guys will have their quarterbacks do towel work, but they have a really wild front side. So they'll be pulling through, they'll be ripping open, and they don't hear that whip of the towel. The whip of the towel comes from extending, right? And you can't extend properly unless you have a disciplined front side. So this kind of is twofold. It works on both things. So what you need is you need this football. You're going to hold this football awkwardly in front of your face. Now, the reason why we do this is because if you pull down, you're really going to notice it when the ball's outside of your frame. So literally all you're going to do is just act like you're playing catch with the towel in front of your face like so. And we're just going to throw and you're holding this in front of your face even with like your mouth or your nose awkwardly right when we throw it could be a little bit tighter it'd be a little bit more comfortable but we're trying to build stability in the front arm if you guys have and I realize not a lot of you have this but if you guys have like a heavier like you know like baseball or like BOSU ball or maybe even a heavier football that will serve to strengthen your shoulder a little bit more but all we are doing is keeping this in front of my face and just working reps of me snapping the towel, building that front side discipline. Now, before we get into the exact sets and reps you should do on that drill and a full speed example of that drill, if you're a quarterback and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off season, we're coming out to 13 more states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So check out that very first link in the description below if you guys would like some more information on how you can sign up and what we will be covering for quarterbacks. We're gonna be coming out to Las Vegas, Nevada, Charlotte, North Carolina, Portland, Oregon, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, Buffalo, New York, Atlanta, Houston, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Michigan, Boise, Idaho, and finishing it off in Los Angeles, California. So guys, you want some more information, how you can sign up, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get back to this video. Now, when it comes to working a habit like this front side discipline, it takes a lot of reps, guys. So I recommend doing about 50 to 100 reps of this specific drill. I know that seems like a lot of reps, but guys, the towel does not put any stress on your arm. You're not holding anything heavy. You're not holding a ball. You're not throwing far. This is solely rep work. And if you want to get better at a skill as a quarterback, you have to love the boring stuff. And this may seem like a boring drill, but it helps you so much with that front side stability. So I'm going to show you a full speed example right now. So again, I recommend doing this in front of a mirror, ball awkwardly in front of your face, just throw. Then you come back, just throw. And we are working on snapping and hearing that whip of the towel to promote good extension. Now, we're going to be going over a great quarterback footwork drill that all high school quarterbacks can do. So, you're going to need just a hurdle. If you don't have a hurdle, you could set up three cones in place of the hurdle. And all we're going to be doing, you guys have probably seen this before, is just shuffling around the hurdle. You want to have a target set up maybe about 10 to 12 yards, maybe 15 yards away on a dig, maybe on a post, maybe on a curl, whatever the case may be. Now, here's the catch to this drill to make it a little bit more advanced. As a quarterback, what are we constantly 
constantly doing with my footwork. When we drop back, when we get outside pressure and I step up in the pocket, what do we call that? We call that a reaction, right? So I feel this outside pressure. I'm not seeing it because you never want to look at the rush, but I feel this outside pressure, I step up. Pressure here, I step back. Pressure here, I step away. It's all a reaction. So anytime that you're training footwork drills, you should never just shuffle around a hurdle. It should be based off of a reaction. So you kind of need a partner for this one. So your partner, what he's going to do, give you a go call. It could be the receiver that you're throwing to your dad, mom, whoever. And all you're going to do is you're just going to shuffle. And then when they clap their hands, you're going to reverse. They clap, reverse. And you're going to work all the way as fast as clap, reverse. And we have to make sure that we are doing this drill fast. You're a high school quarterback. You need to be operating at a high speed and at a game speed. So I recommend doing about eight reps of this specific drill to work on your pocket footwork. The entire time, guys, we're in a position ready to throw. I should be able to hit this dig coming across or this route in the middle of the field from wherever. I'm shuffling back, I should be able to hit it. You gotta make sure that you keep your head even with your back knee so your weight can stay back and I'm ready to throw from wherever. So again, eight reps of this drill. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna look full speed. <laughs> Now this next drill for quarterbacks is going to be a throwing mechanics drill. And I think honestly, this is one of the biggest problems that quarterbacks will have. And this is a very easy drill to work on the specific problem covered by this drill. So the problem I would say, hold on, before we get into this drill, it takes two footballs to do this drill. You don't need a partner. You can do this in your room even. It does not require a lot of space. But one of the biggest problems that quarterbacks will have is they don't have any dissociation. So what does dissociation mean? That's essentially means separating your upper body from your lower body. I want all of you to think about the throwing motion like a baseball swing. Let's say I'm in the batter's box, pitcher throws me a pitch, I step to the pitcher. Does the bat come through same time the stride does? No, the bat stays loaded. You're separating your upper body from your lower body. Very similar to a golf swing. You go up with the club, what happens? You hips drive through, the club trails behind. It's, it's honestly very, very similar because golfers, baseball hitters, and quarterbacks are all rotational athletes that use something called torque and torque comes from that dissociation with your upper body and your lower body. So now, what's the problem? What do quarterbacks do wrong? So quarterbacks will be in the pocket, they'll set up to throw, and when they take a step with their front foot, their body weight, even if their weight is loaded back, right, because the base I teach is about 60 to 65% back. What guys will do is on the stride, all that weight goes forward, so they'll be here. They're trying to get the ball out too quick. But when your weight is shifted onto the front side, you cannot separate your shoulders. It's no different than a hitter in baseball. Pitch comes. They go here with their weight. You're not gonna have any power. You're hitting this thing with just your arms. You're not engaging your hips and your legs into this hit. Same thing as a quarterback when we throw. So what guys need to do is when they take a step, it's a separate event. You've gotta keep your weight back. I heard this great analogy the other day that you wanna keep your knee and your hip pointed in front of you as you take a stride. So you're here. Keep the knee and the hip this way. Because if you keep the knee and the hip there, your weight's back, your shoulders can separate. And now, when I transfer that weight through, there's a separation element, and that's what creates torque. So this is a very, very easy drill that you can do to work on generating that torque and getting to that separation spot. So, like I said, you need two footballs for this. So, these two footballs, I call this a nose-to-nose -nose drill, and you're doing it off of a drop. But you wanna almost pretend like let's say I'm throwing a slant to the left, right? So there's two variations of this. It's gonna be off a one-step drop and then a three-step drop. So you're gonna be here, set, go, one step. You gotta go nose to nose with the two footballs as the front foot gets down. It's impossible to go nose to nose if your weight shifts forward. You can do it, but it's gonna feel real awkward and real off. So it forces you to have to stay back. It forces you to have to keep your weight back by going nose to nose with the two footballs. So you're doing it off of a one-step drop, and then you're gonna be doing it off of a three-step drop. So it's one, two, three, there. And it helps you stay back and separate the upper body from the lower body on the foot strike, which puts us in a position to where I could have torque and shoot through. So what I recommend is doing about eight to 10 reps off a of one-step drop on the left side, eight to 10 reps on the right side off the one step, and then eight to 10 off a of three this way, and then a three this way. So it's probably, I would say what, 16 reps on the left, 16 reps on the right. I'm gonna show you how this should look full speed. Now, before we get into the full speed example of that drill, if you're a quarterback and you would like to improve your your reading defense's ability. Check out that second link in the description below. You can get access to over 500 different videos on how you can read defenses. We break down the videos into categories like cover one, cover zero, cover two, three, four, cover six, and we have the titles of the names of the plays. We break down everything I draw on the screen.
screen. I talk about weaknesses of coverages and what quarterbacks are specifically supposed to look for. Guys, if you don't have a high football IQ, you will not be able to play at the next level, especially if you're more on the average side of things. You don't pass the eye test. You're not six foot four. You can't throw the ball 70, 80 yards. You make up for it with the mental side of the game. So if you want to improve your mental side of the game as a QB, check out that second link in the description below. Let's get back to this drill.